Well, hello, thank you for joining me today again on the Church History Trail. And as you can see, we're uh, back here in Portadown and we're at uh, Drum Cree. And of course, you can see the church there, Drum Cree Church up on the hill with the bell tower. And of course, that's where we're going to walk up to because uh, that bell tower has a very uh, significance to uh, the story that I'm going to tell you this afternoon and of course this during the siege of drum Cree, as it was known um the land rovers police land rovers would have been here uh, this road would have been thick with police land rovers an army would have been in the field and of course they would have had their bollards and barbed wire and everything and uh, of course that was to keep the orange men from uh, walking down towards the garfagi uh, road which the residents there had blocked and uh so that was back back in the day um, but we're here and it's peaceful today thankfully and uh, so we're, we're going to uh, walk up towards the bell tower because as I say the bell tower has a great significance to uh, the story that I'm going to tell you but definitely a lovely sight there up in the hill isn't it very beautiful so who I want to talk to you about today is a gentleman called John Mitchell now John Mitchell was a Protestant Irish nationalist activist who uh, was the editor of his own news of his own paper, which was the uh, United Irishman. That's what it was called. Who in 1848 was sentenced to 14 years uh, penal transportation, as it puts it, beyond the seas. And he was born near Dungiven in County Derry, Stroke London Derry, on the 3rd of November. 1815 uh, and his parents was the Reverend John Mitchell Sr who was an unsubscribing Presbyterian minister uh, with Unitarian sympathies and his mother was called Mary beautiful uh, scenery here as you can see it's a lovely day now the Reverend John uh, Sr was minister in Newry and at the age of 15, young John Jr, he entered Trinity College, Dublin. And of course, Trinity College was founded by uh, Queen Elizabeth I in 1592. So you can see the church there up in the hill. And that's where we're going to be heading to. But I'll just give you a wee view here of the stream that runs underneath the bridge here. As you can see, you can see the cows chilling out so they are and as I say this here would have been full of orange men right up there it's as thick as flies right up the whole road there and then what you would have had hello and then what you would have had here too is uh, you would have had a Land Rovers and police before, before they got their bollards and they had shields and so they were blocking the bridge here so there you go. Now, in the spring of 1836, uh, John met Jane Werner, uh, who of course was known as Jenny. And she was the only daughter of Captain James Werner. However, it's believed that she wasn't uh, his biological daughter. So I don't know how she ended up in the Werner family, but uh, somehow she did anyway. So we're going to go in here. And the Verners were massive Unionists from Armagh, all except Jenny, that is, who herself was an Irish uh, nationalist. Very strange indeed, but uh, you have to remember this is uh, Northern Ireland, and uh, back then it was uh, it was all Ireland. So <laughs> we're a funny people here. There's no doubt about it. Now the couple were married in the Bell Tower of Drum Cree Church in 1837 in February and that's the bell tower there so that's why we're making our way up to the bell tower because it was in that bell tower there where John and Jenny uh, were married so uh, 
very interesting indeed. Now, the couple lived in Bomb Bridge for a time, where John, as a qualified attorney, opened a new office in Newry uh, to practice law. And they ended up in America. And John Mitchell was both pro-slavery and he was also anti-Jewish because he argued against the emancipation of the Jews and he also wanted to reopen, believe it or believe it or not, the African slave trade, much to the uh, dismay of his fellow Irish uh, Republicans. And so you can see the beautiful scenery here of the countryside. So he's quite a controversial figure, even uh, among Irish Republicans, there's no doubt about it. Now, three of his sons joined the Confederate Army during the American Civil War. Of course, the American Civil War was from 1861 to uh, 1865. And they were James Johnny, Johnny or John, and uh, William or Willie, as he was known. Now, Willie was actually in the Stone, Stonewall Brigade. Believe it or believe it not, that was uh, General Stonewall Jackson's brigade. And uh, Willie was killed at Gettysburg in 1863. And in 1864, John or Johnny was killed at Fort Sumter. And uh, Johnny, as he was known as John Jr., he died after three hours of agony. He was actually hit by a shell. And uh, here's what he said. I die willingly for South Carolina, but oh, that it had been for Ireland. So he was uh, certainly following in his fa father's footsteps right up even to uh, his death. Now, the other son, the oldest son, James, he lost an arm in uh, one of the battles near Richmond in Virginia. So a big connection with this family uh, and the American Civil War. And John Mitchell Sr. himself, he had uh, volunteered for service in the Confederate Army, but he was actually turned down, believe it or believe it not. And the reason why he was turned down was because of his defective eyesight. And it rendered him then incapable for such uh, service. So, amazing. But he was accepted into the ambulance corps of the Confederacy, and so he served in it for a brief period of time. And here's a wee grave here I'm going to mention. It's a of a, a soldier and as you can see it's Private J. Morrison Pioneer Corps 13th of February 1944 and he was aged 45 and then it says worthy of everlasting remembrance so there you are and there's the corpse badge as you can see and there's another grave here as well as the soldier that I'm going to mention and it's this one here. And this is Private R.J. McNally, the Ulster the Fed Regiment, 13th, 13th of March, 1979, and he was only aged 25, and that's from his father and mother, and that's the family grave there then, the McNally grave. So there you are. In the year that uh, John Mitchell died, which was 1875, uh, before that he was actually uh, elected to the British Parliament, believe it or believe it not, for uh, Tipperary. And he was actually elected on a platform of Irish Home uh, Rule, Tenant Rights and Free Education. And he was denied his seat twice because he was a convicted felon because he of course he had been uh, transported and he died at his parents house in Uri on the 20th of March 1875 aged 59 and he's actually buried in Uri and there was also a statue of John Mitchell in Uri I'm not sure if it's still there because um, there was a big outcry I think there was over a thousand petitions um, of people who wanted it uh, removed because of his views on uh, racism because he was pro-slavery and uh, so there's a big outcry I don't know where that statue's still there or not but uh, here we are at the bell tower of Drum Creek Church and uh, 
This is the church saying that John and Jenny uh, Mitchell were married in, in this actual bell tower. I've been told, so there you are. Unbelievable. Now, obviously we can't get in today because it's not open. But if you check out a wee short video I done on uh, Drum Cree and uh, John Mitchell, I done a wee short video where I actually filmed inside the bell tower. And it's a wee short one, but uh, it'll let you see inside it. And I do mention John Mitchell in that wee video. So we can't get in today, but if you check out that wee short one in my, uh, in my short videos, then you'll be able to see inside the church. So there you are. So thanks for watching and uh, God bless.